translation of Umm al-Qitab, Surah al-Fatiha. Amin. I'm Riyasat Amin Iman, um, presently lecturing at the Department of Economics. Um, first of all, welcome to our expert group discussion, a dialogue to highlight some of the key monetary issues raised in Professor Umar Chapra's 1985 book titled Towards a Just Monetary System. This discussion is part of an ongoing collaboration between Maybank Islamic Berhad and the Center of Islamic Economics IIUM on the issues of Islamic banking finance and Islamic economics. Very few of us in economics and finance are unfamiliar with this gem of a book by Umar Chapra. It gave us so much insight at a time when very little was known about Islamic financial systems. Today's discussion focuses on the modern relevance of the key concepts raised in this book. Before moving any further, let me first give a brief overview of our esteemed discussants. First, we are honored to have Dr. Abdul Manab Abdul Wahab, who really doesn't need an introduction. So I'll just provide a very brief one here. Presently, Dr. Manab is the President and Managing Director of Limra Assets SDH, SDN BHD, and Vice President of Corporate Strategy Planning at Al Ebris Local uh, Global Capital Berhad and Paxos Ebris Skylight Berhad. He is also an active member of the Movement for Monetary Justice Malaysia, which advocates reforms to the banking and monetary system for the well being of all Malaysians. Dato Manap is also a former CEO of Bank Muamalat Malaysia Berhad, as well as the CEO of PT Rimau Indonesia. His 30 plus years of experience in all areas of conventional and Islamic banking includes important positions held previously in other institutions such as Maybank. Dr. Manap attained his master's in business administration in finance, specializing in finance at the University of Hull, UK. He obtained his first degree in business administration from Ohio University in the US and a diploma in accountancy from UITM. Our next discussant is Dr. Gairu Zazmi bin Madhani, fondly known as Dr. Gary in the university. Dr. Dr. Gary is an associate professor at the Department of Economics and also a research fellow at the CIE, KENMS IAUM, with 20 years of teaching experience at the undergraduate and postgraduate levels. He spends his free time researching international trade, political economics, and economic development and finance. He spends his additional free time being the director of AMAD, basically okay. the academic management and admissions division. Basically, this is the entire administration uh, office um, that falls under his uh, purview. Dr. Gary holds a PhD in political economy and public policy from the University of Southern California, as well as a master's degree in economics and a degree in business administration in finance from the same university. Finally, uh, before handing over uh, the session to our moderator, um, who is also the project leader for this collaboration, is Dr. Muhammad Nizam Barum. Dr. Nizam is presently lecturing at the Department of Economics and is well known for his extraordinary memory. He is also the previous director of the CIE. He's an avid researcher and the recipient of several well-known grant initiatives, including the LRGS, the NRGS, the ERGS, and the RIGS. He specializes in Islamic economics and finance, especially in areas of the voluntary sector or third sector as we know it, and um, capital markets. So without any other further delay, let me hand over the session to Dr. Nizam. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Riyasat, for your welcoming remarks and introducing our uh, discussions for today. Uh, let me share my screen first before I'm presenting uh, the contents of Chapra's book. Yeah?
Okay. Uh, can you see the slide now? Okay. Right. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. To all the participants uh, to, for this uh, expert group discussion. Uh, I really hope that our discussion today will be very casual. Yeah? So, it will be much easier for us to uh, express ourselves yeah? and, and give uh, a very frank and uh, honest uh, comments uh, on the proposed framework of uh, uh, riba free banking and monetary policy conduct as proposed by Professor Omar Chapra. Uh, can you see my slide, sir? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, a bit of uh, background of the of the book. Yeah. So what we are presenting and discussing for today. Uh, is taken from uh, the book published in 1985 towards a just monetary uh, towards a just monetary system and the idea of this uh, book is to come up with a monetary system and banking system which are in harmony with the values of islam and the goals of islamic economics uh, particularly in achieving uh, general well-being of the people as well as social economic justice. Okay, so some of the goals that uh, Professor Chapra has identified are as follows: yeah? uh, broad-based uh, well-being, yeah, social economic justice, uh, stability of the money, yeah, which uh, he believed an important aspect of a uh, just monetary system and uh, mobilization of funds uh, towards uh, achieving public interest or social interest and finally uh, everybody would expect that uh, even in an islamic banking system uh, people would uh, be uh, offered by the best uh, uh, kind of financial services available yeah, for the benefits of the people Okay, so uh, just a bit uh, disclaimer, uh, what the overall book is suggesting is a total reform of uh, different aspects of the economy and the society. Uh, but what uh, I will be presenting and a bit later by Dr. Irwan will be the framework for the RIBA free banking as well as uh, monetary policy conduct in an Islamic economy. So there are prerequisites uh, for a successful transformation towards a riba free economy. Uh, for example, uh, character, yeah, uh, in terms of uh, moral values, yeah, and uh, brotherhood, yeah, in the community, and also the concept of social equity and justice, yeah. The revival of key institutions, for example, uh, the institutions of Zakat, and also important uh, legal reforms uh, which uh, will promote the concept of equity financing as opposed uh, to the current uh, system in which uh, somehow promotes uh, the interest based financing. So, the idea is to uh, allow uh, transformation towards social equity and economic equity at the same time. Okay, uh, this is the most important uh, aspect of uh, the framework, the, uh, the emphasis on these six components eh, of a riba free banking system that Chapra has proposed. Yeah? Uh, of course, this uh, will be common for most uh, monetary system, yeah? but uh, Chapra emphasizes that uh, even though these components may be the same, yeah? but the ethics, values, yeah? and some of the emphasis in terms of the roles and responsibilities of these different institutions would differ uh, in line with the goals of Islamic economics. So you have the first important component uh, being the central bank 
and then uh, followed by three different types of financial institutions. So you have the commercial banks, non-bank financial institutions, as well as specialized trading institutions. And then you have uh, the two important components to build trust and confidence of the system, which is the deposit insurance corporation and also uh, investment audit corporation. Yeah. So the investment audit corporation uh, will be a critical component of this system, uh, especially in making sure that equity-based financing uh, works. Yeah. Uh, in, in giving fair returns to both the financiers as well as the uh, mudorik, the managers uh, of funds. Okay, so these are the traditional roles of uh, central banks, which uh, Chapra also affirms. Yeah, so this is similar issuance of currency, yeah, a banker to the government. Uh, settlement of checks and uh, fund transfers, yeah? lender of last resort, yeah? and a supervisory and regulatory body to the financial system as a whole. Uh, however, Chapra emphasized that uh, there are some additional roles in view of the slightly different nature of a riba fee banking system. Uh, the first, in line with the objective of uh, making sure that there's uh, social economic justice, central bank must ensure that uh, any possibilities of uh, wealth concentration through the financial system is foreclosed. Yeah? And then to ensure that the stability of uh, money and overall social economic justice. Yeah? Okay, because the idea uh, that Chapra is proposing here, uh, which is primarily an equity-based financing mechanism for commercial banks as well as non-bank financial institutions, uh, which uh, apparently creates an additional risk to the banks. Yeah? So it is important that um, the supervision and examination by the central banks on the operations of the commercial banks and other non-bank financial institutions to be strengthened. Yeah. And then it is also important to be highlighted here that uh, Chapra views the money creation process by the banking system uh, considered to be part of uh, so-called public goods yeah, because these are funds or deposits uh, taken by uh, from the public and uh, the ability of the private banks to create money from this must be channeled for public interest as well. Yeah? So public funds must serve public interest. And the central bank must also be active in the process of uh, Islamization of the uh, banking system and the economy by providing the necessary infrastructure, yeah, uh, knowledge uh, building, as well as uh, human capital building yeah, to ensure that the equity-based financing that he is proposing would be uh, uh, working yeah, efficiently. Okay, so we move to the roles of the uh, banking. Yeah, uh, the commercial banks. Yeah? So basically, he is proposing uh, primarily equity-based financing by commercial banks. Uh, prohibition of riba is important, but it must be uh, transformed fully. Yeah? So it should not be just a mere uh, change of uh, nomenclature yeah? or contracts yeah? which uh, end up having still uh, a debt like uh, financing mechanism. Okay, so public funds uh, as a result of uh, money creation process should serve public interest. Uh, banks should be universal and multi-purpose in nature to allow the banks uh, to take up uh, all the equity-based financing mechanism 
Mudaraba, Musharaka, and also invest uh, in joint stock companies yeah, and so on. And there's a more careful evaluation of investments yeah, as a result of the uh, higher risk exposure due to the equity base. And uh, would need a closer relationship yeah, with uh, companies, entrepreneurs, and so on. And uh, as a result of a, a, of a ban on interest, yeah, so there should be a new mechanism for liquidity management uh, for the banking system uh, done by the central bank. So these are some of the things that he proposed here. Yeah. Uh, balance modes yeah, of uh, Mr. Bank. Yeah. So we already have this. Yeah. For example, we have Mudaraba investment uh, placement yeah, among the commercial banks yeah, in the uh, interbank market, yeah. uh, but he is also proposing a kind of a cooperative uh, mechanism among the banks yeah, for short-term credit, uh, as well as a, a common pool at the central bank contributed by the different uh, commercial banks uh, as a as a fund in which the member banks uh, can tap into uh, in, in, in seeking liquidity. Okay, uh, this is the characteristics of uh, resource mobilization that he is proposing in relation to the workings of the commercial banking. Okay, so even though uh, large components of de deposits uh, going into the commercial banks will be in the form of Mudaraba deposit, but uh, Chakra insisted that uh, capital uh, or shareholdings uh, by the uh, the bank should also be relatively high as well uh, to further strengthen yeah, the uh, position of the commercial banks. And then uh, for a small component of demand deposit, this should not uh, earn them any return uh, because uh, the principle of the deposit is secure. Uh, and therefore, this is the role of the deposit insurance corporation that he is also proposing. Okay, this is uh, quite interesting. Yeah? Uh, a certain percentage of money creation process conducted by the commercial banks must be channeled to the government for social purposes. And this can be done in the form of Kardul Hassan, yeah? interest-free loans to the government. So this is in line with his argument that uh, the money creation process uh, that is benefiting the private commercial banks must also serve the public interest. Even though he is not uh, uh, to the extent of arguing against money creation and fiat money, uh, but he recognizes that uh, the process of money creation created a lot of benefits, yeah? signature uh, benefits to the private commercial bank that this should be shared with the government uh, as uh, 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 an entity that represents the well-being of the people. In fact, he is also arguing that uh, in addition to the interest-free loans that the commercial bank should be giving to the government for public uh, purposes, yeah? uh, for example, financing public infrastructure, or financing uh, social programs and so on, the profit-making financing that the commercial banks are making must also give some of those profits back to the government. This is uh, construed as a Mudaraba advances eh? uh, based on the ability of the commercial banks to make profit from the money creation process. Okay, so uh, these are two important components yeah, that uh, we may discuss uh, a bit later. Yeah? Okay, these are some of the benefits of equity-based financing. Uh, focusing on Mudaraba, Musharaka and joint stock uh, companies. Yeah? 
And if there is any other alternative forms of financing, it must be on the basis of no risk, no return. Uh, this is uh, what uh, we normally uh, construe as linking the financial sector with the real sector. And so the return to the financial sector must come from the real sector. And if there's no risk, uh, exposure to the risk in the real sector, then the return in the financial sector is considered to be uh, not uh, accepted, uh, not acceptable. And even if, let's say, by Mu'ajjal, uh, DBA or Murabaha are being uh, used by the banks uh, for a particular purpose, it should not be widely used. It should be kept at a minimum. So in other words, uh, Chapra is proposing for a primarily an equity-based financing mechanism and for all kinds of uh, financing by the commercial banks. Uh, in addition to the equity-based financing, uh, Chapra is also uh, arguing for uh, uh, social uh, responsibility roles uh, by uh, all the financial institutions. Yeah? Not only eliminating interest, this is only one component, but must also address uh, socio-economic uh, uh, issues. Okay, uh, including the promotion of uh, entrepreneurship in the society and reducing uh, inequality in the society and to ensure financial stability. Okay, in addition to commercial banks, uh, he is also proposing non-bank financial institutions to play uh, an important role, particularly in promoting entrepreneurship. Uh, so, promoting equity financing and also entrepreneurship. And uh, the third type of uh, financial institutions that he is proposing uh, is the specialized credit institutions. And so, this is in the form of microcredit uh, organization which provide uh, micro loans eh, to entrepreneurs and so on. And then the last two components of his RIBA free uh, banking framework is to build trust and confidence. Eh? The first one is on the uh, deposit insurance corporation, which will ensure the demand deposits eh, of uh, the depositors. However, this should only be applicable to demand deposits and not mudarabah deposit. And for the mudarabah deposit, there should be a loss, uh, loss of offsetting uh, fin uh, funds. Yeah? Uh, what we uh, know now as the profit equaliz equalization funds yeah? to ensure that there is not much fluctuations in the return to Mudarabah deposits. And then the last component that he is proposing is the investment audit uh, corporation. Uh, since uh, all financing will be primarily based on equity base, yeah, therefore there is an important need for uh, auditing yeah, of uh, the different projects uh, the funds are financing. And therefore, if uh, commercial banks and other non-bank financial institutions were to take up this responsibility, it would be very costly. So he is proposing that there is a separate investment audit corporation that will be going uh, randomly or in a particular, that there should be a particular mechanism to check on the operations of the different projects to ensure returns are fairly given to both shareholders as well as the uh, depositors. Yeah. So this is to ensure that uh, this type of responsibility is outsourced to this institution uh, to ensure that uh, cost competitiveness remains uh, with the commercial banks and other non-bank financial institutions. Okay, so what can we observe eh, on this uh, proposal? Eh? Uh, 
some of the ideas have been taken up. Eh? For example, the value-based intermediation and sustainability banking that we have now, even in Malaysia, uh, trying to uh, channel uh, financing from these commercial banks and financial institutions towards promoting the well-being of the people and environmental preservation and protection. Uh, however, uh, the idea of uh, and, uh, primarily equity-based financing by the commercial banks and non-bank financial institutions is still uh, not uh, being taken up. Yeah? Uh, even though in many discussions, conferences, uh, they were called for equity-based financing to be increased uh, in terms of its percentage uh, uh, in the operation of Islamic banks, but the percentage is, is still uh, minuscule. And uh, uh, the two important highlights uh, related to the use of public funds in the process of money creation, uh, probably this can uh, be discussed a uh, bit later yeah, uh, from, by our discussions yeah, on the practicality as well as viability yeah, of uh, looking at this uh, proposal to ensure that uh, funds coming from the commercial banks is channeled towards uh, building the country, uh, promoting the well-being of the people and so on. And uh, it is also important to highlight that whatever Chapra is proposing here, and the gradual steps uh, moving towards the free uh, or the riba free economy is based on the assumption that the economy will eventually be 100% an Islamic economy. Whereas uh, in many countries, uh, in Malaysia, for example, we have a dual banking system in which the conventional banking and Islamic banking uh, uh, in operation, yeah, in parallel operation. So how would this uh, be practical in the context of our country? Yeah? So these are some of the things that uh, we can highlight uh, later in our discussion. All right, so I pass the floor to Dr. Irwan. Uh, Dr. Irwan will be presenting another important component of the monetary system, which is the monetary policy conduct uh, as proposed by uh, Professor Chapra. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay. Ah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you Dr. Nizam uh, for the first uh, presentation. Um, our honorable um, uh, discussions today, uh, Dr. Uh, Mana and uh, Dr. Gairu as well as uh, my colleagues uh, from the Department of Economics uh, as well as uh, the university's community who are with us today. Um, so I'll continue uh, from what Dr. Nizam has presented and this is basically on the uh, monetary policy. Okay, so um, to provide a little bit of background of the chapter, so just now Dr. Nizam presented the institutional setting, which is uh, in chapter six of the book, uh, which focuses on the network and the characteristics of financial and non-financial institutions. Chapter seven is a continuation. So from the institutional setting, we'll be discussing on the uh, behavior of those um, institutions with regard to monetary policy, so we'll be focusing on the mechanism, instruments, and the effectiveness of monetary policy. And later on, chapter eight will be the evaluation where uh, Professor Chapra then uh, discuss uh, the instruments that we can use in order to evaluate the performance and the achievement of such a system, hypothetically. 
Um, so uh, basically, the main uh, content of uh, chapter seven uh, is basically to address this issue of coming up with uh, this new monetary system, because based on the earlier chapters, uh, Professor Chapra have uh, mentioned that in an Islamic economic setting, uh, we're, we're going to have a total abolition of the interest rates, which would then lead to this non-availability of uh, certain tools of discount rate, as well as the open market operations. So chapter seven is basically, um, you know, want to address this issue of, uh, to describe uh, what would be the, uh, this, this new monetary system uh, in order to accommodate all these changes. So there are five sections altogether in this uh, chapter uh, where uh, Professor Chapra started with the strategies. So basically he explained what would be the uh, strategies that would assist uh, the establishment of, of uh, for a stable money uh, in, the, in the system. And then he moved on to the sources of uh, monetary expansion, followed by the tools and instruments of monetary policy. And then he gave a brief conclusion. And after the conclusion, he raised a few questions and provided answers to these questions. So let's start with the strategies. So basically, the strategies are highlighted uh, by Professor Chapra to basically support um, his um, hypothesis that says that uh, when we abolish interest rate, uh, we're going to have a stable equilibrium in the money market. Uh, he started the discussion with uh, describing the money demand under this new, um, under this new uh, Islamic monetary system, uh, where he followed the, um, the conventional framework of describing money demand. So he compared uh, between the Cambridge uh, quantity theory of money, QTM, uh, originally uh, uh, you know, discussed by Fisher, and then he compared that with uh, Keynesian. So under the Keynesian, basically, he mentioned that the three uh, components of money demand, the transactionary, precautionary, and speculative, where the speculative demand uh, for money, uh, according to Keynes, is uh, uh, inversely related to interest rate. And this uh, basically have led to a more unstable money demand. Uh, in this chapter, uh, Professor Chapra uh, explicitly mentioned that uh, in an Islamic economy setting, the money demand would be similar to the Cambridge quantity theory of money equation, where the uh, speculative motive would be minimal due to the absence of interest rate. So basically, money demand would be a function of uh, K, which is a portion of nominal income that the people would like to hold in cash. And um, there are two primary motives okay, for money demand, the transaction need for me as, uh, money as a medium of exchange, as well as the precautionary demand. And according to Chapra, uh, this would then uh, contribute uh, to a more stable uh, money demand. Uh, and then he mentioned uh, four to five uh, factors that provide uh, stability to money demand. So the absence of interest rate, the imposition of zakat, would basically minimizes the liquidity preference of money. And then uh, due to, um, same as what Dr. Nizam mentioned uh, earlier, uh, because basically the people have less options. So there are only two options where to put their money. They can either hold cash with no return or invest in profit and loss sharing assets uh, with calculated risk in order to get some return. Uh, so due to less uh, options available with regard to money holding, uh, it will lead to a more stable money demand. And the remaining three factors are basically his arguments with regard to the market clearing conditions in the market and the money market, where now due to the absence of interest rate, uh, the market would clear because of the preference, uh, the risk preference of all um, uh, the, 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 the household, the consumers will be available. Okay, so whatever that people uh, risk averse, uh, risk level will be able to find something that fit their taste. And this will lead to no excess um, demand and no excess supply. The market will clear perfectly because of the availability of uh, profitable investment opportunities, as well as the adverse effect of zakat and inflation. And uh, since there is no interest rate, uh, basically the people would have to depend on the uh, either the uh, profit rate or the expected return uh, for as the as the rationing function as the rationing factor for the um, uh, money market uh, to clear. And according to him, uh, using the profit rate is better because it clearly uh, reflects uh, the economic prospects uh, much better than the interest rate. And then he moved on to describe uh, money supply. 
so according to Chapra, uh, basically the quantity of uh, money would be the uh, primary uh, monetary policy variable in an Islamic economy. Uh, the central bank basically need to generate uh, a sufficient money supply okay, in order to meet whatever the, uh, uh, the economic growth uh, and, and uh, stable price as well as other social economic goals. And due to this, uh, we need to have a proper regulation of money supply. And the suggestion is that the central bank needs to gear monetary policy towards uh, sufficient uh, money supply growth, which is uh, pretty much similar to the monetary approach. Uh, and then the next section is on the sources of monetary expansion. So he highlighted uh, three factors, three sources that would lead to monetary expansion, fiscal deficits, commercial credit creation. So these are basically the uh, from the uh, lending of uh, money by the commercial banks, as well as the external uh, sector in terms of the balance of payment surplus or deficit. Uh, he discussed a little bit long with regard to fiscal deficits. Uh, I think this is because uh, from his experience, perhaps uh, he observed that uh, there have been kind of a more or less uh, abuse of uh, deficits uh, by uh, many uh, governments in the Muslim world. And he did mention, okay, as, as in, the, in the introductory part, the, money, the Muslim countries basically going to have problem with monetary policy because it is not effective since our money market are not fully developed in the 1985, uh, in the 1980s. So because of that, it needs to be coordinated uh, closely with the government's fiscal policy. There are two causes, according to uh, Chapra, fiscal deficit. The first one is because of inefficiency in public revenue and not enough tax, basically not enough tax money collected. And number two is because of the wasteful and unproductive spending uh, of uh, public money. Um, and he also mentioned that in Islam, basically, this should have been avoided further because uh, unproductive and wasteful spending are also a breach of, you know, our religious law. Um, he then suggested, uh, he then discussed uh, the three uh, different uh, classifications of uh, government expenditures. And then he mentioned, he suggested what are the most suitable fundings uh, for these uh, types of expenditures and the benefits. So there are three types of government expenditures, the normal and recurring expenditures. Uh, these are the operation uh, budget of the government. According to Chapra, this uh, should be funded by taxation because it will force uh, the government to spend prudently. And secondly, we have the development uh, or project expenditures. So according to Chapra, project, uh, uh, development or project expenditures should be funded by equity financing with financial institutions as well as the public. Um, and then this will basically uh, uh, lead to a social balance between public and private interest. And finally, um, the government expenditure will also cover em emergency expenditures uh, during hard times, uh, times of emergency. And this, according to Chapra, uh, would be best uh, funded by compulsory borrowing, uh, especially from the rich uh, of the society, because this would then uh, you know, create sense of togetherness and unity uh, among the people. Um, with regard to the how much or how big fiscal deficits uh, that can be tolerated, so for projects undertaken through equity financing, the government must basically uh, adopt a commercial pricing system, which is free from subsidies. Um, if the government wants to subsidize the poor, these are to be financed using zakat and donations, but not tax. Um, and the deficit should only be tolerated. Uh, to the extent necessary to achieve this sustainable long-run growth, uh, broad-based well-being, uh, and uh, stable prices. The second factor that uh, you know contribute to monetary expansion okay, is the commercial bank's credit creation. So this is similar to any discussion in the uh, modern uh, monetary economics. Commercial bank deposits are of two types, the primary deposit or the base money, and then the uh, money created. Uh, from the fractional reserve system. Um, so the, the, the primary, the base money have uh, usually uh, not, not really giving any much uh, issue, but the, the created money, so like what Dr. Nizam mentioned, uh, uh, same that Professor Chapra have no issue of this uh, creation of money through the lending system, through the fractional reserve system. It's just that he articulates a lot uh, with regard to the usage and how to control it because of the inflationary effects. So it must be regulated. And um, then the third uh, factor that would lead to this uh, uh, monetary expansion would be the balance of payments, where countries, basically, he simply uh, give uh, suggestions. 
uh, countries that enjoy a surplus uh, must ensure uh, prudent public spending that correspond to the real economic growth in order to avoid inflation. While countries uh, that uh, experience uh, deficit uh, balance of payments, so these are uh, more problematic because they need to basically implement a major reform with regard to their social economic system and align their policies uh, with the Islamic teachings. And then the, a bigger portion of the uh, chapter is on the instruments of monetary policy. So these are basically the mechanics of uh, the poly, uh, monetary policy to equilibrate uh, the money market and finance the fiscal deficits and then achieve uh, the social economic goals. Uh, in the chapter, he, he listed originally six uh, monetary instruments. Uh, but then he in, in the last one where he put you know other formal and informal instruments he added uh, I think between five to six uh, additional uh, instruments. So he started with the, the money growth target. So this is more or less similar to the monetary approach where he uh, emphasized on the uh, periodical periodical target and review of money supply growth, especially the high powered money. The review should be done uh, at least quarterly or as often as necessary. The review, but not the, the revision of the rate. Uh, the, the target, basically, the rate should not be changed frequently in order to maintain stability and confidence uh, in, the, in the society, in the public, except when there is a need uh, to accommodate any shocks. Um, so again, he highlighted, uh, as what Dr. Nizam has mentioned, even in this chapter, I think he repeated uh, two or three times that the creation of this uh, high-powered money uh, since it is the social prerogative of the central bank, so any benefit uh, derived from this uh, signal rate must be channeled uh, within the social welfare-oriented value system uh, towards the realization of our social economic goals. So there are two things that the central bank need to basically channel, two ways, uh, two channels of this uh, signal rate benefit. The first one is to the government. Uh, to, to the government, it should be provided in terms of interest-free loans in order for the development or the project, uh, the, the second uh, source of monetary expansion and the fiscal policy uh, to implement or to develop social welfare projects. And a portion of that the signal rate benefit should be given to private financial institutions in terms of mobile profit and loss sharing. And this uh, can be used as an additional uh, credit control instrument. And uh, we're basically uh, in that you know, agreement, for example, uh, Professor Chapra mentioned that uh, the uh, private financial institution should try to also provide the service to the non-bankables. Um, secondly, the second instrument will be the public share of demand deposit. Uh, here, uh, Professor Chapra mentioned that the uh, commercial bank uh, should divert up to a maximum of a quarter or 25% of their demand deposits to the government. Uh, to finance the socially beneficial projects in which this in this project where the profit loss sharing is not feasible or desirable and he gave three uh, rationale to justify this uh, and um, again basically uh, as in, in line with what he had been mentioning uh, these are all public money pub, so it, they should be basically uh, used for the public interest so the role of commercial banks in this kind of uh, framework is simply as an agent to mobilize these ideal resources from the public and give it back to the public. Um, so uh, these ideal resources uh, basically belong to the society and they must be, uh, the, any benefit obtained from it must be given back to the uh, society. Uh, besides uh, any customarily acceptable usage for private benefits, uh, and then he mentioned among the benefits uh, of this uh, instrument is that the tax collection will no longer be used to pay for the cost of borrowing uh, from the banks, but we will be basically limited for the uh, logistic or the administration cost uh, of, the, of moving uh, those uh, funds. And this 25% is suggested as the maximum rate under normal circumstances, but can be exceeded uh, when, when the, there is a need uh, during emergency. Um, the third instrument would be the statutory reserve requirement. So he mentioned between 10 to 20 percent of demand deposits of these commercial banks. Uh, this seems to be a little bit, I think, too high compared to what uh, the common practice in uh, many uh, central banks uh, right now. Um, this 10 and 20 percent should exclude Mudaraba due to the equity nature. And uh, you know, if the commercial bank allow the withdrawal of Mudaraba, then they need to maintain a separate uh, kind of a reserve on their own. Uh, 
but not as statutory reserve with the uh, central bank. Now, what should then the central bank do with this uh, statutory reserve? So there are two purposes. They are to be used to basically enhance uh, their effectiveness as the lender of the last resort because according to Chapra, he predict that due to the uh, greater share of uh, public uh, no, uh, profit and loss uh, sharing uh, PNL equity base uh, in the in the in the economy so there is a kind of uh, the the commercial banks are more exposed to this additional risk uh, so in the in this regard the central bank should really uh, be more prepared that's why uh, he also mentioned uh, he he imposed he suggested a high uh, kind of a rate uh, between 10 to 20% and then should also and then the second one is the central bank can use this for investment um, and he also mentioned like what i think uh, dr nizam uh, mentioned just now uh, this additional uh, kind of uh, full uh, funding uh, the profit equalization and stuff so he also mentioned that the central bank uh, may also create a common pool by uh, raising fund through a special reserve requirement uh, which should also be may be able to address uh, the same need um, number four, cre uh, credit uh, ceilings. So this is, I think, kind of uh, normal where the central bank need to impose a uh, ceiling to commercial bank in order to limit uh, the uh, you know, excessive creation of money. And then number five uh, will be uh, the central bank need to come up with a value-oriented allocation of uh, capital plan. So this plan, uh, basically, again, he justify the creation of this plan, which must be, uh, which then will be enforced to the commercial banks, because the demand deposit are basically public funds. So the benefit should be given back to the society. So they are basically, um, he mentioned two criteria: uh, optimal, uh, the 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 uh, credit allocation must lead to optimal production and distribution of goods and services needed by the majority of the society. And then the benefits uh, from this credit creation must be enjoyed by the optimum number of businesses in the society. So this is where he highlighted on the, uh, the benefits of, of SMEs uh, with regard to employment and the share of the GDPs because of the uh, these SMEs basically have a kind of a more effective or bigger impact on the welfare of the, uh, of the best in the society. Um, so this uh, uh, plan, okay, would be able to then reduce uh, the risk and cost of financing SMEs without this additional arrangement for collaterals, like what uh, we are having today, uh, because they could jointly introduce both the, gov the government as well as the commercial bank, okay, would be able to introduce interest-free loan, okay, uh, interest-free loan guarantee scheme, uh, and share the expenses to, to jointly monitor the SMEs. And then uh, with regard to the arrangement uh, of this uh, plan uh, is similar to uh, any ordinary mubaraba. Huh? I mean, in the case of uh, failure, then the commercial banks are entitled uh, for refunds. But in the case of a systemic or market failure, then the bank will have to bear the loss proportionately according to their contribution. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the last one, the sixth instrument will be other formal and informal instruments. This is why he grouped uh, the many other uh, tools among others, interestingly, he mentioned that the central bank should use their moral persuasion, a kind of a diplomacy or, or a soft kind of um, a soft diplomacy uh, 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 to use their network or communication uh, with uh, or informal uh, to, to persuade uh, the commercial banks to basically, uh, you know, uh, be part of this, uh, contribute uh, back to the society and, and other things. Um, so the profit, and then he mentioned that the profit sharing ratio must be determined by the negotiating parties without uh, too much intervention by the central bank. Uh, the central bank can should only interfere, okay, in order to uphold equity or to avoid unhealthy uh, competition. And then he continued to propose that these uh, six additional instruments, uh, where I think uh, maybe what we can, uh, you know, interesting to see is the creation number three, the creation of a common pool uh, raised by a special reserve requirement mentioned earlier. Uh, and uh, all other things I think are more or less uh, similar uh, as what have been uh, highlighted or put forward by many other Muslim economies uh, with regard to this uh, refinance ratio, the lending uh, ratio of uh, Qadrul Hassan uh, by the commercial banks to the government, similar to what Dr. Nizam had mentioned uh, earlier. Um, and then he gave uh, conclusions so he emphasized that whatever that he had proposed here is not to forecast money demand, but simply to ensure a stable money growth. 
in order to make the monetary policy more effective uh, under this new Islamic monetary system. And um, according to uh, Chapra, uh, we may apply the Friedman's money growth target without uh, its excessive commitment to free market. And uh, we need to review uh, the target periodically. And uh, according to Chapra, he again uh, emphasized that the non-availability of conventional monetary tools is not a serious problem if MO or this high-powered money supply is regulated properly and complemented with uh, prudent government spending. And this is why he said again that the cooperation between the central bank and the government is essential. And then he closed the chapter by uh, raising uh, two questions. First one is on recession because uh, throughout the chapter, he emphasized a lot more on inflation. Uh, but what about recession? It seems that uh, by, um, by uh, using this uh, money uh, supply, a money growth target, uh, a kind of uh, mild inflation seems to be tolerable. So what about recession? Um, according to uh, Chapra, uh, if there is a recession, the central bank should not basically interfere by forcing the private sector to spend. Instead, the government need to offset uh, any deficiency in private demand by simply raising uh, you know, more high-powered money via its fiscal deficits because this is, according to Chapra, would uh, be uh, worthy or to be put under the, the emergency nature of the need where the government should be allowed uh, to have a larger extent of their fiscal deficits. And then uh, he mentioned about external shocks uh, that are caused by this hot speculative uh, you know, capital uh, basically would be minimum because uh, there is no interest you know, and, and uh, we are more we have more equity-based uh, demand deposits. And uh, this should be further discouraged through this incentive. Okay, so the government as well as the central bank uh, should be, you know, come up with any um, disincentives uh, uh, and controls in order to discourage uh, these uh, speculative uh, shocks uh, from the external sector. And um, according to Chapra, the capital outflows usually happen due to high inflation, weak currency and unrealistic tax system. In this case, he would call for a more, a greater uh, total uh, reform uh, for the tax system uh, in order to strengthen and stabilize uh, the monetary uh, value. And uh, that's all from chapter seven. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ewan, <clears throat> for a detailed presentation of uh, Chapra's proposed framework of monetary policy conduct. Uh, so we have uh, two important components uh, of this proposed framework. One is on the riba free banking uh, that I have uh, presented earlier and also uh, the monetary policy conduct uh, as presented by Dr. Irwan. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we proceed with our session today. I would like to get uh, Dr. Abdul Manaf as somebody who are in the industry yeah, and uh, still in the industry. Uh, vast experience in the Islamic banking industry particularly. Uh, and also have some exposure in the conventional banking system as well, right? Yes. Uh, so we would like to benefit from your insight. Eh? So what is the uh, value of uh, uh, Chapra's uh, framework? Probably uh, that's what you can start with the RIBA free banking uh, framework first. And then uh, later we will discuss about the Monetary policy for us. Yeah? So I, I give the floor to you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nizam. Okay. Um, the first uh, first thing I'd just like to uh, relate a bit yeah, in terms of my experience, in the sense that uh, I joined the banking industry in 1981. Yeah? And that was uh, quite uh, not too long after the financial crisis in 1977. Yeah? And the first financial crisis that I um, faced uh, as a banker was in 1987. And the next one, which was uh, quite damaging to the, uh, uh, the main eco uh, tiger economies of the 90s, was in 1997. And then another crisis happened in 2008, yeah, whereby uh, the Asian countries was not too badly affected, but uh, the uh, Europe and US was very badly affected by that crisis. Why I'm uh, stating this is because um, if you look uh, as a trend, 
uh, every 10, 11 years or so, there is a financial crisis. Yeah, uh, 77. Uh, in fact, actually, it started in 1970 70 because uh, the US broke away from the Bretton Woods mm. uh, system. Right? So from 1970, there was a crisis, OPEC crisis actually started 1977, 1987, uh, 1997, 2008. So if you add uh, between uh, 97 to uh, uh, 2008, that's an 11 year gap. So if you add 11 years to 2008, then the next financial crisis should have happened in 2019 or 2020. So the question, I mean, these are the other questions which when we look at this COVID situation, is this also, I mean, I don't want to say it's a conspiracy theory or anything, but it, it camouflaged the uh, financial crisis uh, that is uh, a coming or, or a, a situation that we are already in. Okay? Why I say this is one of the signs uh, of a, a crisis or economic uh, slowdown or recession is an overhang of the property market. Yeah. And every time, right, from 1987, 1977, uh, 1987, uh, 97, uh, even now, there is an overhang of, of property uh, in, in the property market. Uh, I'm told there's over 60, over billion worth of properties which are unsold. And whether these markets can be sold or not, that's very questionable. Yeah? The other thing that I want to mention about this crisis is uh during the 19 during 1980s uh housing loan rates was only around 10 to 11 percent the interest rates yeah? and the repayment period is maximum yeah 15 years is between 12 to 15 years after the 1987 crisis what happened was the interest rate came down to about nine percent but the and the repayment period got extended to 20 years i will explain why i'm telling you this yeah? Then after the 97 crisis, interest rates came down further to about 8% and interest rates went up uh, uh, and repayment period went up to 25 to almost 30, uh, 30 years. Yeah? And after the 2008 financial crisis, uh, though Malaysia was not badly affected, repayment period went up to as high as uh, 35, you know, some 40 years. And in fact, uh, today, uh, I mean, last week or two weeks ago, uh, Berjaya Investments uh, came up uh, with uh, a 60 year repayment uh, for a housing loan of 300,000. And interest rates today is only averaging around 5%. So, as you can see, every time there is a financial crisis, interest rates come down and repayment periods get extended. So, the question is why? If, we, if the repayment period remains at, um, at uh, uh, 15 years, borrowers or buyers of houses will not be able to pay the housing loan because the uh, the the house uh, uh, property prices have gone up significantly but the salaries have not got, gone up in uh, in tandem and why is that and, and banks because they need to sustain their business yeah? they need to continue having the business because because if if they do not extend these loans the existing loans which are being repaid uh, will cause a problem to the uh, to the industry because uh, whether we like it or not, uh, uh, default will always happen. Yeah, so that's the more. So it is the banking system that's determining the growth of the economy. And if you if you if you were to study the uh, breakdown of the uh, uh, the, the loans, uh, uh, whether it's Islamic or conventional, by the banks, we will notice that most, uh, about 60% of the uh, loans give, being given out by the banks uh, constitute a personal and uh, uh, housing loans. Yeah? Uh, and then it will be commercial, the big uh, companies yeah, that will be getting the, the loans from the banks, and, but to the smaller sectors, small and medium-sized enterprises, uh, only about 10 to 15 or max 20%. Whereas this sector is the sector which, engage, which engages or employ most number of uh, people. Yeah. So, and one of those things in my uh, early days, uh, which uh, I questioned on this issue about banking, is uh, when I became an assistant manager, 
uh, one of my tasks was to check uh, was to close the bank at the end of the day the, the, the cash uh, to be kept in the strong room so assuming uh, the, the the day's cash that's kept in the strong room is uh, 1 million which means that when we start off the day the following day the opening cash balance is also 1 million but what surprises me at that point of time was how come you know banks can give out loans 5 million or 10 million every day when the cash is only 1 million it was only later that i realized that it is because of the credit creation process so banks what is understood by this credit creation process now i'm very confident of stating this eh, is banks do not need money to lend banks create money in the lending process you know in fact it is not money uh, it is the credits that they create into the borrower's account yeah and the depositors money is not used at all so the theory the theory that is being taught uh, in many uh, universities or written in many books to say that banks are efficient intermediaries eh? when i say banks at this moment irrespective of conventional or islamic banks you know the theory in, in banking books says that banks are efficient intermediaries taking deposits from excess sectors of the economy and lending to uh, 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 shortage uh, uh, areas of the economy yeah that is false totally false in the early days when i talk about this you know i was condemned uh, quite frequently but alhamdulillah in 2014 this the bank of england you know in uh, 2014 quarter three you know if you uh, google uh, the article the bank of england came out openly and state that banks do not lend money banks create money in the lending process you know so most people think about money is the uh, paper money that we have in our pocket which is called the fiat money but in reality uh, the uh, 97 uh, between 94 to 97 of the money that's uh, in the system is monies created by the uh, banks the commercial banks yeah so the central bank only uh, supervise or regulates to ensure that the banks uh, uh, through the capital adequacy ratio that the banks can only create a certain amount so for me when i realized this and when i joined uh, Bank Muhammad uh, as CEO, one of those things that first thing that I was uh, uh, researching uh, uh, on my own, uh, sorry, that Bank of England thing uh, is also uh, emitted by um, uh, uh, the Bundesbank of Germany. Yeah, They openly state that, uh, that uh, it is money creation. So uh, when I joined Bank Muhammad in 2005, one of the first things that I wanted to uh, check was also that. that uh, banks create money from the loans that they give or financing that they provide yeah and if you look at the accounting entries uh, of islamic banks there is no involvement of money uh, fiat money uh, or cash uh, in the disbursement process it is just credit entries it is just accounting entries uh, no cash involved and uh, one of the things to to have a clearer understanding of this is when you and I, outside of the banking system, lend money, the transaction only happens in the asset side of the balance sheet, yeah? which means cash will reduce and uh, borrowers will increase, yeah? debtors will increase. But in the banking system, when the banks lend, mo uh, lend money, uh, both sides of the balance sheet increases yeah? uh, because they debit the debtor's account and they credit you know, the savings or the demand deposit account. Yeah, so which is why balance sheet of banks increase every time they give a loan. So the big question uh, for me, uh, I'm a little bit uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, critical about this issue, is because why do we allow uh, commercial banks yeah, to create money out of thin air, which I consider because most of the books written on Islamic banking. Uh, on riba is about uh, uh, riba anasia, yeah, which is uh, the extension period, uh, the profit or interest that start on the extension of a loan. But the other side, uh, this credit creation is actually part of riba al-hodel, because you're you're giving something 
uh, you're not giving anything out of nothing. Which uh, in the sense that the customer thinks that he's getting money, but the bank is creating that money from thin air. Yeah, and this is uh, and when, when I say thin air, uh, there, there are several articles that you can uh, search, and one of them is by uh, Professor Richard Werner, I think of Southampton University, which also did an empirical study on this. Basically, he says banks create money out of thin air. To me, and uh, for all of us uh, in uh, MNJ, we say, uh, and of course, MNJ consists of ex bankers. Eh? Um, many of them are ex bankers, professors, who begin to understand this money creation issue, says that this is the main source of riba. Because one of those things that I questioned early in my days as an Islamic banker is why would Allah want to wage war against uh, riba? When if we, on the one side, I mean, on, on if we were to do like today, of course, uh, Machapra did not uh, encourage uh, Murabaha or Tauru. But if the Islamic, the way the Islamic banks today are doing just Murabaha transactions through through Tauru, Tauru for instance, yeah, uh, or for, for party uh, buy and sell, is if that is such a simple way of overcoming riba then why would Allah want to wage war? So maybe when uh, I think um, uh, Chapra also mentioned in his book that uh, Sayyidina Omar did question that when it comes to um, uh, Riba al-Fadr, uh, that Rasulullah did not explain too much about this. Yeah? So probably because that kind of mechanism, which is credit creation, did not exist during that time. Yeah? So this is the main issue about uh, uh, Islamic banks. Yeah? So, um, of course, the other things about what he said, going for Musharaka and, uh, and uh, uh, Muraba, uh, Mudaraba uh, product, uh, I fully support that. Uh, but I must say that the banking system, uh, whether uh, even in the Islamic system, uh, is uh, shying away from this kind of product simply because the banks do not want to face the risk. Yeah? Because, uh, uh, but uh, currently what I'm doing in, I mean, in Limra Assets, we also do uh, Islamic uh, financing. Yeah, But uh, the only thing that the profit sharing that we have, the rate is rather uh, high lah, yeah? as compared. Why? Because the investors expect a return, a high return. Investors that put uh, the funds into our company expect uh, you know a, a 12 to 15 percent kind of return because they see that as a risk. So if we are getting money at 12 to 15 percent, and our cost or our uh, what do you call uh, our administrative cost comes to about three to five percent, you know that's only 20 percent before uh, profits. You know, so we need to be charging about 24 or 25 percent before we can you know. Uh, uh, I mean, to charge to the uh, clients. Yeah? So profit sharing, uh, at that level, most of, most uh, uh, clients will stay, say, you know, it's expensive. But those uh, who are uh, in dire need of funding, uh, uh, you know, still uh, takes the financing. And in some uh, areas, we are able to do uh, what you call a proper uh, musharaka model. For instance, I've done, uh, we have done one where uh, the the we we break the financing is to two. One is uh, you know a, a cash loan, you know uh, at a very low using the Murabaha model. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the the takeoff is uh, from the profit of the company. So the question is whether can can this be done? Uh, my answer is hundred percent yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and when I when I was in Bank of Malad, what we did was I think I think at that point of time we were among the first to do it. Was uh, there was this uh, PKB Kelantan, Permodalan uh, Kelantan Berhad? You know? They came to uh, take a financing from us. Uh, we so what we did was with them uh, was to do a proper musharta, a real musharta, yeah, whereby we we invested into the into the purchase of the building. And from the operations, uh, we share the profit. Yeah. It took us, I think, almost a year before the central bank approved that particular product. Yeah. And we cannot do it within inside the banking system. 
because the capital adequacy, the capital ratio, uh, and I think you can look under Basel three or under uh, TIFSA requirement, where if you do musharaka, the capital requirement is 300%. You know, so it discourages the bank from doing uh, real musharaka. Uh, but if you were to do the Murabaha uh, model, you know, the capital ratio is only about 80% to 100%. You know, so three times capital requirement if you were to do real musharaka. So the system today just, uh, can, because at the end of the day, the central bank is also governed by Basel. Yeah? So because they are governed by Basel, whatever that we do at this Islamic level, you know, needs to conform to Basel requirements. And so in that, in that sense, we cannot exit uh, ourselves really out of the banking system, which is why uh, uh, today I noticed that there is only a few uh, companies which have started uh, crowdfunding. Yeah? But when you do crowdfunding, it is not under banking, it is under a securities commission because it becomes an asset manager. So I believe you know, uh, uh, that the real Islamic banking or Islamic finance, I mean, in this sense, uh, you don't use the word banking anymore, but the real Islamic finance can reside within a securities commission as an asset manager and the best example that i can give of this uh, other than the crowd funders that we are currently working with is like tabung, tabung haji because tabung haji is the moderate taking all the investments eh, from the uh, public and they invest in plantation housing or whatever projects that we do and what do they do they share the profits with the investors later so the best model, I think, is uh, the, the asset management model, uh, moving away from not just uh, 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 moving towards um, uh, uh, the Musharaka uh, and Mudaraba model and uh, using less of the uh, Tawaroks or the Murabaha uh, type of uh, structures. So that's uh, my thought on this. Thank you very much, uh, Dato, for uh, an insightful comments, uh, uh, particularly on your experience trying to structure Musharaka uh, financing uh, with uh, one of the entities from uh, Tantan government. So that is, uh, I think, uh, uh, a useful information for us to look at how, uh, in, on one hand, we are trying to promote Islamic banks moving towards equity financing. But on the other hand, the regulation, uh, Basel three uh, requirements, for example, inhibits that, that tendency and creates barriers. On top of the risk exposure that you have, you are also required to put on additional capital advocacy requirements for that. Okay, uh, I think we can uh, uh, move to our second discussion and uh, later when uh, we have our open discussion, uh, we can come back to that for, for your comments. Yeah. Uh, that, Dr. Gairu, yes, uh, yes, please, uh, we are uh, looking forward to your comments yes, uh, for, for the monetary policy conduct. Yes, nice to check. Yeah. Oh, okay. Inshallah, after Dr. Gairu presenting his comments, we would open the session to all the participants. So you can already prepare your comments, Inshallah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, so, uh, what I've been given is uh, to look at the chapters on monetary policy uh, from the uh, uh, chapter. Uh, in a way, if you want to comment on this, 
you have, you really have to read the whole uh, the whole book okay, rather than just uh, looking through the uh, chapter on the policy because uh, it's related to uh, all the other all the other chapters because then talk about monetary policy is also involved with uh, social policy on all the other instrument that he's been talking about uh, in the uh, in the but but before going to uh, the the monetary policy uh, that uh, that is discussed uh, in uh, in the chapter, okay, let 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 us, let us go through the the history of this uh, monetary policy and fiscal policy. is uh, starting from the nineteen hundred. Okay, uh, this is a pictures uh, uh, that I found on Google. Okay, trying to search for a Great Depression. Okay, so. Uh, before uh, the Great Depression, uh, people don't really talk about this monetary policy, talking about government uh, government intervention. Uh, they think that free markets uh, are the best way to, uh, to solve all these uh, all the problems. Okay, but then when you have this uh, a Great Depression, okay, uh, people have to think about how to uh, how to solve the the Great Depression, what and what are the rule of the what are the rule of the government okay, in trying to in trying to solve the problem. Okay, so in the 1930s, uh, I'm, I'm going to go through all these different different theories. Okay? Hopefully uh, we have the time. Okay, so initially what they do is they talk, they use the special equilibrium analysis okay, to uh, trying to solve the uh, economic problem. Just looking at uh, different markets separately. When they want to solve labor market, they look at labor market. Want to look at uh, to solve money market, look at money market. Okay, trying to analyze uh, good market, they just look at uh, the good market. But uh, when a Keynes is coming, what has happened is he introduced uh, general equilibrium analysis. Okay, and from there we have all these different models, ISLM model that was uh, that are still taught in, in, uh, in, uh, in our classes. Okay? And this general equilibrium analysis is going to be very, very important. Okay? But when we look at uh, the chapters on monetary policy uh, in the textbook, okay? and then if let's say you want to try to discuss uh, monetary theory from an Islamic perspective, uh, I think it is non-existent. Okay? So we want to talk about Islamic monetary theory. Okay? You want to explain it from uh, from economic perspective, Islamic economic perspective. That's nothing. Okay? So, so what what we are what we are doing now? We are just using uh, the uh, the conventional theories in trying to uh, in trying to explain uh, monetary monetary policy from an Islamic perspective. So that's why that's what what is that's what we see from. Uh, is just taking uh, conventional policies and trying to put it uh, uh, in in Islamic in Islamic perspective. Okay? That, that is one of the bigger problems that uh, that we have. We're talking about credit creation and all those things. In fact, when I when I read credit creation, I was okay, why is it we have this trade credit creation in the uh, in, uh, in the chapters okay, when we talk about credit creation, okay, it's directly linked to about direct directly linked to uh, creating something out of uh, something out of nothing. Okay, so that's in the 1930s. Okay, uh, we we have a change in paradigm in 1930s. Then we have another change in paradigm from conventional perspective. Now, when are we going to have the change in paradigm from an Islamic perspective? Okay, from, from the conventional perspective, they have changed a lot. Okay, then 1930 they have changed. Okay, and then when they have all this great inflation, they change the way they they change the way they analyze, they change the way they talk about uh, they talk about the their model, of talking about uh, talking about economy. So in the 1970s, you have the saltwater uh, economies and you have the freshwater economy. The saltwater economies is the is the eastern part of the US, the the, the from the fresh waters in the, the Chicago school, the, the one coming in the middle. Okay, so you don't have the the west, the western part of the of the US. Okay, so where where, where the salt waters 
uh, have different ways of uh, trying to analyze the uh, the economy, and then the the, the, the fresh water has a different ways of analyzing the economies. Okay? So in fact, when, when when you look at what they are analyzing before, okay, during uh, when we talk about all these Keynesian, the old Keynesian, they talk about full employment. Okay? But then when you have great uh, all this inflation increase very very high. Okay, they, they change their uh, they change their analysis. They change everything to inflation inflation targeting. Okay, so and so so that's uh, that that uh, one that's the salt water economies. Okay? And then you have the the then you have the fresh water saying that government don't have to do the government don't have to do anything. Okay, uh, and then in terms of academically. The, the influence is very, 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 very great okay, from, from the freshwater economy where, where they come, where they come up with all these micro founded models okay, rather than uh, this Keynesian uh, model just having uh, aggregate, aggregate function. Okay? And then in the, in the 1990s, in the 2000s, okay, the, the model changed. Instead of uh, talking about uh, uh, monetary talking about it, then the, 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 the current model that's being used by a lot of uh, banks are this dynamic stochastic literary model. So from the 1930s up to now, you have these three revolutions and, uh, when we talk about uh, macroeconomics, monetary policy or, or fiscal policy. But when we talk about Islamic perspective, uh, I think we are still using uh, Omar Chafra's model, okay, and that is the models in 1970s. Okay, even, even in, in our classes, it's not easy for us to talk about you know, dynamic stochastic general model that model that uh, that are being used by a lot of uh, conventional economies, uh, the current conventional uh, current conventional economies. Okay, so you have this you have these changes in the model, okay, and you have these changes in the perspective. Yeah? You have changes in the way people are doing things. Okay, so now, so that that's where the Islamic perspective needs to come in. Where where when are we going to come come with uh, models that that will be able to that will be able to explain what really is going to happen if we have a, a really riba free economy. Okay, so currently we don't have we don't have that model. Uh, Omar Chakra talked about all these things, all these different instruments, okay? and he said, uh, and he predicted that this is going to happen. Okay? But how are we going to show that this is really is going to happen? Okay, we need to have a model that's going to show if this, if we do this, do this, do this, and these are the things that is going to, these are the things that is going to happen. Okay? So that's the bigger, that's the bigger picture. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have this, we have these evolutions of the we have this evolution of the model. We have this, this evolution of perspective, even from uh, even from Western perspective. Okay. So there need to be this Islamic perspective. Yeah. Uh, that if, if let's say we want to if we want to change the economy. Okay. Now let's look at the okay, really the, uh, the 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 paper itself. So the paper talks about abolition of interest rate. Okay, ensure stable money growth, money supply has to be properly regulated, okay, uh, complemented by prudent government spending, and there needs to be a cooperation with the central bank and, uh, and the government. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, one of the first things that we have in the paper is talking about uh, speculative demand, uh, speculative demand for money, where we say that uh, there will, if there is speculative demand for money, there will be very very small. Okay, but what if people do not use the money because they think that in the future there will be better investment, okay? an investment that's going to give that's going to give more return. Okay, so what if you you think that in four months there are going to be another. Of the young initial public offering, whatever initial public offering, lah, mm. where it's going to give you return of 100 percent. There will be grabs going to uh, have uh, an IPO in, in, in a few months. 
Okay, so you are going to wait for that. You are going to wait for that uh, for the investment. Okay, so that there will be that there's going to be some speculative demand, the speculative demand for money. But this speculative demand is not in terms of in terms of interest rate. Okay, but this one is in terms of in terms of real investment. Okay, so we don't really know whether how how big this this speculative demand is going to be. Okay? Maybe it's going to be much bigger than. Uh, when you have it, uh, okay, uh, like, like what we have, uh, when you compare to what we have currently. Okay, so currently when we talk about speculative demands, mostly on interest rate. Okay, maybe if we abolish interest rate, that speculative demand become very big because people are looking for are looking for investment. Okay, so that's where we need to have a model to see okay, what's going to happen to speculative demand. Okay, if we eliminate, uh, if we eliminate interest. Okay. Uh, another thing that uh, okay, when you read the, the papers okay, uh, in terms of uh, monetary policy, it, it is as if, as if the roles of monetary policy uh, is limited to become something that is uh, very, very passive. Okay? Mm -hmm. you, you set the, you set the, uh, the rate and then uh, just leave it. Hey, uh, yeah, in 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 a uh, in, in the text we did talk about uh, something, okay, not not to be passive, okay, but okay, when initially when you read it, okay, you are going to think that the the rules of monetary policy is uh, is just setting the is just setting the rate similar to uh, similar to monetaries, okay. In fact, that is the idea, okay, mm -hmm. in the nineteen seventies in the in the nineteen eighties. What is the rule of uh, what the rule of monetary policy, okay? Okay, but now uh, when, when all this inflation, then you have uh, you are talking about uh, the target inflation. Previously, talking about uh, target uh, full employment. Okay, uh, the, the thing changing. Okay, and what are the thing? Uh, the part of the uh, high power money made available to should be an interest fee loan and the government to finance social welfare. Okay, so sure, uh, you want to uh, provide, uh, but here if you are talking about interest free, okay, but it's not really, it's not really interest free, okay, because you do have government need to do, the government need to do uh, something, okay, and then the government need to uh, think about uh, how to insure the money, okay, so you get money from that, that, that 25%, okay, uh, from, from that demand deposit, Okay. If the government wants to use the money, the government needs to ensure the, to ensure that the, the they will be able to return the, the, the money mm. to the uh, to the depositor. So that that, that it will involve cost uh, somewhere uh, somewhere there. Okay, and I think uh, somebody talked about uh, insurance agency in the uh, in the paper. And he talked about okay, all this. Uh, uh, okay. So the, the the one that I don't really understand uh, in the, when, when I try to read the uh, when, when I, I read the uh, even though I've read it some time ago, a long time ago. Uh, uh, it talked about credit session and I talked about Modaraba. Uh, so uh, and, and a lot of things. Uh, is it possible okay, when I talk about credit pressure, uh, instead of talking about credit, you, you, you try to create money from, uh, from the Udaraba, okay, even though we say that uh, you should not do that. Okay, uh, it should come from it should come from demand deposit or uh, uh, talking about the correct reserve and everything. Okay, where when where you are talking about Mudaraba, that Mudaraba uh, uh, because it, it is uh, an equity, it, it should not be involved with the uh, with the money pressure. It should not be involved with uh, uh, with uh, lending between the, the government and, uh, and the central bank. Okay, but if you go to some recent papers, okay, talking about credit creation, they they do talk about creating monies using. Equity uh, using equity financing using uh, rather than using loan, it try to make it uh, try to make it 
more, more Islamic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, profit sharing, uh, profit sharing financing uh, in creating, uh, in creating money. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I just uh, read uh, the recent papers, okay? rather than using that, but but trying to use, uh, try to use equity to try to uh, to try to create, uh, to try to create money. Okay, so we talk about uh, statutory reserve requirement again demand deposit. So uh, that thing, uh, can we uh, can Mudaraba deposit? Because currently, most of the deposit, yeah, even uh, even the central bank has uh, have differentiated like Mudaraba account and the uh, Wadiah account. In the Mudaraba account, I think it's not covered by uh, it's not covered by the insurance. Yes. Okay, but the Wadi account is yeah. uh, is covered by, by the insurance. So now, can is there a mechanism? Can we come up with a mechanism? Okay, I think I think we can come up with a mechanism where uh, the money from the Mudaraba account can be uh, can be used in terms of uh, in terms of money uh, money patients. But then, you know, uh, we are creating, uh, like, like I talked talk about before, okay, guys, we are creating money out of, uh, out of nothing. Okay? But then we have, we have to look at uh, this thing. Uh, if let's say Mudarabha account, we used to create money, what needs to be uh, what needs to be done? So it's not really uh, creating money out of, uh, out, of, uh, out of nothing. Okay. Uh, and then talking about uh, again uh, money, uh, high powered money in the modern economy. Uh, currently, you're talking about high powered money. It's just a very small percentage proportion of the uh, of the total money supply okay, in creating the money. Because if you're talking about the, the reserve that uh, the, the required reserve is only in the of two percent, very very small. Okay, and the money comes from that uh, comes from that two percent. Okay, that high powered money. So how 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 are we? Uh, if let's say we 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 don't have this uh, credit creation, okay, what how are we going to create money? Okay, what type of money we are going what we are going to have, or we don't totally don't have totally don't have no money, okay? Uh, Another thing that he talked about, how subsidies needed for poor or low middle income class should arrange from the lack revenue. I don't think it's going to be enough. Okay? If, even if we look at our uh, current government policy, uh, trying to give up money to, to the B14 and everything, I think money from uh, Zakat, or at least the amount of money that we, we are getting from Zakat now, Zakat now will not be enough. Okay, uh, and then how about cooperation with the central bank and government is essential. So, so this is the thing. If, if we talk about the monetary policy and, uh, and fiscal policy, okay, then why is it that we differentiate the two? One of the reasons is that we want to uh, separate the power between government and, you know, and the central bank. Okay, I think the central bank, the objective is different. Okay, when the government, the objectives are the objectives are different. Okay, theoretically, currently, we are talking about uh, the central bank. The objective, uh, most of the now is inflation targeting. Okay, where mm -hmm. the government, uh, the 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 objective is all these nice nice things. Okay, all these political, all these political things. Okay? Multitasking. Uh, all the multitasking. So now. Yeah, what what do we really want? How do we separate? How do we separate these two? Because you do not want the government to use the, the government to use the central bank for whatever the whatever their political need. Okay? Surely it's nice to say in the text, okay, uh, the government need to do this uh, and then the central bank needs to do this. Okay? But how do we separate these two such that the such that the central bank, such that the government will not be will not be using the will not be using the central bank. So it's good to have corporations, okay. But if you assume that everyone are nice, everyone are, uh, everyone are Islamic, then we can't have that cooperation as as uh, a policy. Okay? But we have to think about what if not everyone are good. 
Okay, what happen if government are using government are using the are using the central bank for for their political purpose? So how do we how do we separate this? How do we separate these two? Or do we or we don't need to separate uh, separate these two between government and uh, the government and the bank? Okay, because an administration okay, and the using of the money. Okay. Okay. So and in the end, we talk about all this whether it is able to uh, solve recession. So that's another thing that we have to look at because it's not model. Okay, we need to know whether it will be able to solve a recession. Okay, if we don't have if we don't have interest rate. So if, when we don't have interest rate, how do we how are we going to solve <coughs> the recession recession problem? Currently, okay, you have to reduce interest rate the people, a lot of people are going to be coming in back. Uh, Okay, but the idea yeah, the government have to the government have to come in and spend more. Okay, but then we only have our fiscal policy yeah, okay, during the uh, during the recession. Okay, we do not have the we do not have the monetary policy. So now when we have a recession, we also need to think about how do we uh, how do we just start the how do how do we just start the economy okay, rather than just uh, rather than just fiscally. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gairu. I think the most uh, important highlight of what Dr. Gairu have, uh, have observed is the absence of uh, an Islamic framework or Islamic model of monetary policy. Uh, what we have is uh, the proposed uh, instruments that uh, Professor Chapra has identified within the riba free uh, banking and financial system that he has proposed earlier uh, what kind of uh, instruments uh, which are available uh, and uh, of course when we have an interest free economy uh, we cannot have an interest rate target right uh, so he have uh, proposed uh, for the monetary policy conduct to focus on uh, money supply target yeah? and and this is uh, in the light of the monetary uh, monetary uh, theory as well. Yeah? Uh, so that with the lack of this uh, model available uh, to at our disposal, uh, as you said earlier, we will not be able to forecast yeah, uh, accurately what will happen. So that creates an uncertainty. We can speculate, yeah, but we don't have the model to simulate or to uh, to to use as a basis yeah, to forecast what will be the impact on the monetary uh, policy aspect. Uh, okay, so we have uh, uh, a number of uh, people in our uh, in our session today. So I would like to invite uh, some of the participants to give their comments. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Nizam. Wa alaikum salam, yeah, Dr. Mustafa. Yeah. So please. Yeah. Okay, Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. <coughs> wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. First of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Nizam, uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Irwan, uh, and also the discussion, particularly Dato and, uh, and Dr. Gairul. I think this was a very, very good contribution uh, to the discussion. Just I have uh, two or three things to share based on what I hear from the discussion and also the presenters. Uh, I think the first thing is, um, as rightly pointed out, that there's an absence of model. And I think there has been a lot of discussion among uh, Muslim economists about the approach that we need to develop such model. Do we take the axiomatic approach where we go to our uh, Torah, we go to our heritage. Uh, for example, you have works on uh, monetary, uh, uh, on money, uh, like uh, Makrizi. Uh, you have uh, the issue of state being given the authority to create money, uh, demand uh, for the people. So there are a lot of pieces here and there. So do we need an axiomatic approach to develop that model? Or the second view is that we need to look at the existing settings. Um, which will make it more pragmatic. So we need to look at uh, the existing models uh, like Chapra is doing and try to develop and see how we can come up with the model. So I think this is a very fundamental issue that we have to look at. 
The other second point, which I think is important is that most of the approach that is taken are micro in nature. And when we talk about markets, you talk about monetary policies, just like Dato mentioned, that um, uh, we all have, you know, we operate based on conventional rules and regulation. You cannot operate a bank unless you have to, you know, go under the purview of international, uh, you know, uh, rules and regulations like the Basel. Huh? So uh, is it a high time that Muslim governments come up with an Islamic market uh, where this Islamic market uh, would help, uh, you know, advance this kind of, uh, you know, uh, policies forward. We have institutions like IDP, et cetera, but I think until today, we do not have what we call Islamic market, which can help to advance this kind of a model. So even if we come up with a model, still we'll be operating on a conventional model. So the third thing which I would like to, to think about is, as mentioned earlier by Dr. Nizam, about the subsidy, which uh, Chapra suggested uh, that uh, subsidy should be based on zakah, not tax. Uh, this is good in a situation where the population is 100% Muslims. But when you talk about a situation like Malaysia, and we know zakah has defined as naf, then how are you going to give to a poor who is not uh, a Muslim, uh, which you cannot give from zakah? So again, so this is another uh, policy issue. Uh, so finally, um, my view is on the, the, the idea of these uh, interest rates, huh? uh, which was concluded by uh, Dr. Gairul, that how do you control inflation? How do you control other you know, issues when you don't have the interest rate. And I think studies show, a lot of studies, that interest rate is the problem rather than instrument itself. Huh? Uh, so in fact, it is the interest rate that create uh, inflation, create business cycle. So if it is the problem, then it cannot be the solution. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mustafa. Uh, there are a few points there, but the point that uh, I was uh, very much interested, uh, which uh, uh, which uh, goes into the core of our discussion today, is the money creation uh, privilege of the commercial banks. Yeah? Or if, let's say, we consider this, because this is uh, not being uh, properly discussed, and also being uh, any uh, clear fatwa being given on this, yeah? but for example, the uh, people in the movement for monetary justice consider this money creation process, uh, creating credit or money uh, out of nothing to be resembling Riva al uh, Whereas in the context of uh, Chapra, he is not against that credit creation process, but for him, since this is public funds. Yeah? Uh, so if, let's say, money is created on the basis of the rights of the government to create money, uh, as Dr. Mustafa mentioned earlier, one of the opinion of the scholars, then this can be uh, recognized as uh, what Chapra has mentioned, that if this money is created, then it must serve the public interest. So if that position is taken, then we can still accept uh, the fractional reserve banking uh, and the money creation by the private banking system. The only thing is that the benefits of those uh, signature benefits must be for the purpose of the social benefits as, as uh, what uh, Professor Chapra has, has proposed. So this is uh, something that uh, not being discussed, and uh, the, the the discussion is whether this money creation is uh, halal or haram, permissible or not. Yeah, some people say that this is something that is okay, but others say that this is uh, constituting riba. Yeah, but whether there are any other opinions on this by the Muslim scholars. And if that is acceptable, uh, given certain conditions, then it can be something that uh, uh, can change a lot. Eh? 
uh, as uh, Dato mentioned, if we want to focus on uh, purely uh, profit law sharing and uh, do not allow any uh, money creation in the system, then uh, you will be uh, resembling venture capital, asset management. Yeah? You will not be banking anymore. Yeah? And, and, and that will be uh, a big challenge yeah, to Islamic banks because you will forever be stuck in that system, uh, not able to move forward towards uh, equity-based financing. Yeah. Uh, I right, like to, Nizam, can uh, I can I weigh on this a little bit? Yes. If you listen also to Chapara, um, when he was discussing on this ribal fadl, one of the principles which he raised, which also appears in Surat uh, Nisa, uh, eating one's wealth unjustly. Akhlil amwal al nas bil batil. He mentioned it there. So if money creation. Uh, you, you create something from a thin air and then you don't own that and you use it to earn something extra. Uh, so it falls under this principle. The second thing is also he mentioned a view by Ibn al-Arabi where if uh, something is you know, given without value, uh, which that we just mentioned, this is also part of uh, a riba. Mm? So I, I think the, the strong view is that uh, money creation falls under these uh, principles of eating one's wealth unjustly. So in whatever reason, whether you're talking about maslah of government, you're talking about any other thing, so long as it defies this principle in any form, you cannot justify it. Thank you. Yeah, um, this, this is why in terms of our thoughts at MMG is this. Uh, Whatever, whatever the situation, we we understand uh, or know uh, that uh, money is necessary, yeah, for any economic transactions. Yeah, we, we, that, so the question is, what is uh, what should uh, be or who should have the authority to create the money? So our view is, yes, credit creation is not right, but if it is created by the government, yeah, because if we were to go back to gold. There is something that's almost impossible in today's context. Yeah? But if we were to look during the Bretton Woods system, money, the paper money was backed by the gold. Yeah? Uh, at, I think it was at $35 uh, uh, per uh, ounce of gold. So it can be $70. But the problem then was because US went into war with uh, Korea and Vietnam. So they needed to print more money and uh, to create money from the gold, it became very restrictive to them, which is why they broke away from the Bretton Woods uh, system. So it wasn't that the Bretton Woods system did not work, you know, uh, especially in today's context where money, paper money is disappearing. Within the next five to 10 years, money is just going to be in digital form, mm -hmm. you know. So in that sense, uh, credit creation by the banks is going to be more rampant. Yeah. So what we are suggesting is give the right to create money back to the government yeah uh, just now i think uh, brother irwan also raised something which i think was uh, uh, which is in the paper of uh, in the book of uh, chapra whereby the central bank creates the money and uh, online it through a mudarabah uh, a, a transaction with the asset manager uh, with the with the lend, uh, i mean financier yeah because what if we were to look at the business of banking, there's two broad uh, businesses of banking, or, or three. Yeah? One is just as a same uh, as an institution for 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 the uh, public to keep their money, safekeeping. Yeah. Number two is payment system. Yeah. To make payments throughout the uh, you know, throughout the, the the system. And number three is lending. What needs to happen is why the credit creation benefits the bank today is because uh, all these functions is within the banking system. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen is you need to separate the savings and the payment system into one entity. Yeah? And, uh, and there is many entities today that are just doing that, uh, especially under digital uh, platforms. And the, the financing function is a separate entity by itself. So there is no credit creation by the lending institution. 
Yeah. So whenever there's a shortfall in uh, of money in the system, then they could so in the comma yeah, borrow through a, a mudaraba transaction with the uh, le uh, lender of last resort, which is the central bank. Uh, that's number one. Number two is when the government have projects. Okay. Why does the government need to lend when uh, from the commercial banks? The government can use the central bank. You know, which has the authority because uh, it is in a different position as compared to the uh, com commercial bank. They use the, uh, the central bank to create the money. Okay. For instance, the government wants to be a hospital. It costs, let's say, one billion. So the, the, the project will be given to a contractor. The contractor needs money. The government will pay through money being created by the central bank. And he will, the government will pay to the contractor. What happens then is money will flow into the system. So the question also arises, since we cannot control the uh, money supply through the interest rates, you know, to manage inflation, then the question becomes how much money should be created and flow into the system. After some time, the central bank do not need to create the money anymore because there would be sufficient money within the system for these uh, fund managers yeah, to draw upon to finance projects. Because otherwise, those, those people who have this money, they do not have any more return. And we would, if we were to look uh, last, I think about three, four weeks ago, even the um, uh, UK banks, uh, uh, central bank, is now considering zero interest rate uh, or negative interest rate, which means that you are losing value if you are to keep money in your bank. So if, if I'm losing money, uh, losing my uh, value of my money, if it is in the bank, why should I keep it in the bank? So I need to have a somewhere, a source somewhere that I can channel so that I can earn some returns. So this is where the, the fund managers or the asset managers, yeah, because they will go by a project. So this is where if we look at this crowd, this crowd is one of those uh, companies, I think six out, uh, one out of six, uh, that is actively doing crowdfunding in Malaysia. So what they do is they, uh, they, they give different returns for different projects. And where do they get their source of funding from? Is from the general public. General public wants uh, you know, uh, returns. Uh, so uh, what uh, Ethics Crowd does is they, they assess the project, they go on a musharaka or mudaraba basis with the uh, 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 project owner, and from that return, they will share that return with uh, you know, the investor. So what we are suggesting is take away the right of creating money by the commercial bank and give it back to the uh, central bank. Of course, issue of control is uh, very important. Yeah, because if we could, if, if we look uh, in the news this last few days, even you know the intervention of uh, politics into police, uh, you know, <laughs> is there. So how do we ensure, you know, this this the, there is a mechanism that the politicians cannot put their uh, their hand into the till of the central bank, mm -hmm. you know, to finance all. These are mechanisms of control. Maybe it has to go through parliament and the likes. Yeah. So, but it is it is. Uh, we, we have studied this. Uh, the, uh, if you look uh, why these issues came about was after the 2008 crisis, many people begin to be, be more aware that the crisis that we're facing every 10, 11 years or so is caused by the, uh, the, the, the commercial banks through the credit creation system. And the banks in Malaysia is making about 34 billion in terms of profits every year. You just imagine if the government makes this profit, you know, through its taxes or whatever, or even half of it, they will be able to finance many of these other government projects that is coming up. Mm -hmm. So the system needs a revamp. Yeah, but if, and, and of course, there are, he mentioned about hidden hands in his book. I mean, the hidden hands of the big uh, uh, money masters, eh? the Federal Reserve Bank the, the, and, and the others, you know, who controls the monetary system, definitely wouldn't want to get away with it. I mean, wouldn't want to let go of this uh, uh, control. So, and, and you're right, um, you know, uh, how, how do we get, uh, you know, the Islamic uh, community, you know, to, to uh, play ball, you know, in this, uh, in this space. You know, otherwise we are always being controlled by the 
uh, the Western countries, you know, which currently are much stronger than than the rest of the world. And and if we were to look at it, uh, China is coming up very well in this, you know, uh, especially in the digital space. And that definitely, I believe, is going to change the uh, monetary policy uh, over the next few years. Okay, Nato, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, so we are moving uh, slightly uh, further from uh, Chapra's uh, position because he is accepting the current yeah, structures, uh, but uh, making some uh, improvements in terms of the way how this uh, credit, credit creation is uh, used, uh, which is to promote the well-being of the society. Uh, what uh, we are going now into is basically coming out with a, a total revamp. Yeah, of the system, separating the financing side with the deposit and payment side. So once you break this, uh, on one side you have the financing, and the other side you have the uh, deposit skipping and uh, and also payment uh, payment uh, payment system. Then you will basically remove the ability of the financing side to make such a credit creation. Right. Uh, so this is uh, uh, one uh, of the potential models uh, that uh, the movement for monetary justice uh, is proposing. Uh, we have with us uh, Tuan Haji Rostam Muhammad Idris, who was the former uh, deputy director of uh, Bank Negara, uh, Islamic Finance and Takapu Department. Uh, Tuan Haji, how are you? Tuan Haji Rostam. Are you there? Yes, we did not go. Yeah? Oh, no. Did not go. Yes, lah. Uh -uh. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, never mind. Uh, so we we are still uh, having a few minutes for for the discussion. So any anyone who would like to join yeah. with the discussion? Dr. Mahyudi, Prof. Aslam. We have uh, Prof. Salama as well. Right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Um, thank you very much, uh, Nizam, and thanks to everybody else who has contributed. Um, um, just a couple of observations. Uh, firstly, I think, um, you know, after all, this is in the context of our, our book review and, and, and how we want maybe give some inputs on the relevance of this book to our current situation. Um, I, I just wonder, yeah, when, when uh, Chapra lists down those seven entities that are, that are part of what he calls the, the, the monetary system or, or something like that, I'm just wondering whether there is a need for an update you know, today, yeah, because you're talking about something written 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that that may be one <clears throat> one of the things that <clears throat> that we need to to take out la, from his writing. Um, secondly, he talks about an equity-based financing system, um, and this has been his position, of course, you know, all the way. Um, but we have to ask seriously when we look at I think mentioned by uh, Mana and, and others. Yeah, um, this has not been the case in in our banking system. I think we may even show that the percentage of equity has actually gone down, maybe, right? I, I don't know. We need to know the exact figures. All right. Yeah, not only in Malaysia, but maybe globally, we could find. So, which means that if we wanted to have an equity based system, we have to look at other than banking. It's not going to happen in banking. So, then how does monetary policy impact? Because the ones who are creating the money are the banks through that credit creation process. And yet the, the institutions that are going to be using equity are not the banks, right? So, so it, will be, it will be interesting to see how we can, you know, we may need to what, move away from banks being the central part of the monetary system or commercial banks for that matter. I mean, not necessarily all banks, because we also see now there are many other types of banks, right? Um, social banks, there could be you know, many other bank-like institutions. So 
how would monetary policy, which is the control of money supply, um, you know, be, you know, be, I don't know the word to use. Is it, the, what is that term they use? Uh, channels of what? Monetary transmission. Yeah. Channel, monetary monetary transmission. transmission. How will it work when, when we are dealing not with the banks or the, the banks are not the main players? Because trying to force the banks to go into equity, we don't see it happening. Right, it has not happened. So, so we may need to maybe try to see what what are those institutions that could play that. Now, the last point maybe is just when it comes to his his point of allowing money creation, but making sure that you know the banks don't take everything. Right. So you you part of the demand deposits are for certain social projects. Part of the profits of banks are also yeah. Um, I mean that that's that seems to be a kind of a intermediary position. You don't want to have the current system, um, and therefore you're proposing that you know there should be a kind of a redirection or reallocation. Um, and this means a totally different role of central bank, even of commercial banks. Um, you know that, that that's something that we have not seen. You mentioned VBI and so on. I, I'm not too sure uh, whether or not the VBI proposal is something that uh, you know will, will will be something that Chapra Chapra's ideas would be you know would be in line. Probably if, if it is if it is implemented. Um, but but I, I just think that the main challenge is a book that was written 40 years ago. With all the developments, you know, over the last forty years, how do we how do we see the relevance and extract out some of the things that have been going on in the last 10, 15 years, you know, and and see. I mean, but there are a lot of ideas, very interesting ideas, which I think are quite, you know, quite advanced like, or something that was written in 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 the early eighties, um, you know, as we go along, and and maybe the crisis, as mentioned by the Tumana, the crisis after crisis that we are having uh, enables us, you know, the opportunity to see whether or not some of these uh, far-reaching ideas can be enhanced. Um, yeah, but 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 just those few points, maybe just to add on to to the discussion so far. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, I think one interesting point that I would like to highlight uh, to Dr. Mana is. Uh, in terms of your experience trying to bring uh, equity-based financing in Bank Muhammad earlier, you mentioned one of the uh, case that we had with the uh, Pantan Pembangunan uh, 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 So, we are looking at uh, Chapra's proposal that uh, in order to bring about changes to the way how the, uh, the banks uh, would operate, is to have this uh, investment audit corporation to, to look at uh, how the funds are being managed and whether uh, the funds are being managed properly, what will be a fair return. Yeah? So this is one aspect that he thought would be important yeah, to uh, to facilitate this uh, movement towards equity-based financing. But in your experience, yeah, when, when you are doing it in, in, in Bank Muhammad earlier, what do you think are other things that are important uh, at least to get some of the banks who are committed with this idea trying to bring uh, equity based financing and they would like to, to to move towards this direction what what are the uh, institutions or building blocks that we need to have to facilitate those things uh, thank you uh, yeah uh, just now when i mentioned about uh, this uh, musharaka model that uh, we implemented there were three uh, uh, clients that we financed on a, a true Musharaka uh, uh, profit and loss sharing model. Uh, number one was the uh, Kelantan, uh, uh, TKB Kelantan. Uh, number two was a company that was doing um, uh, repossession of cars and auctioning cars. You know, they needed some financing. And number three was a car seller. You know, those days the car seller would borrow from the banks. Uh, this time around, uh, we find we finance him when we have a profit share of 70-30, if I remember correctly, 
We give him 70% and we take 30%. Mm. Why we give him 70% is because uh, we don't want to know about the uh, you know overheads that he'll be required because he can play around with it. Mm -hmm. You know, so we give him higher, but we'll just take 30% from the from the profit of the sale of the car. Yeah. But more more importantly, these three com these three companies that we finance under Bomalas Ventures, we had to create we didn't we didn't finance it under the bank. We had to create another entity called Muhammad Ventures. Mm -hmm. yeah, because if we were to create under the bank, then we, we will be charged that 300% capital requirement. Mm -hmm. yeah? So we created another entity called Muhammad Ventures and we financed. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we created a capital so in, you know, for this Muhammad Ventures to do this finance, to do this Musharaka structure. So as I said, it cannot be under a banking model. You know, uh, it will have to be under a separate model. Yeah, uh, I think that would be the key, the key thing. That's number one. Number two is when you look because banks, when they look at uh, uh, when they look at uh, financing or loans, they look at the credit risk. Uh, so they have a credit officer, you know, to do the assessment. So for this kind of projects where you do musharaka, you know, it's not just a credit risk. Because you're not giving a credit, you're doing a joint venture, you know. So it's a project as a project uh, manager or project uh, finance officer that we need to have so that he understands the business. So I mean, just for the info of um, everyone here, uh, this is still under wraps. Uh, we have prepared one paper which we have given to the uh, someone within the government, you know, to to propose this model. Uh, especially for uh, finance uh, uh, to, to finance uh, SMB uh, 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 customers, mm -hmm. you know, where uh, we still do this model uh, in terms of what I mentioned earlier, where we need to have a mudaraba with the uh, central bank, uh, but the 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 uh, financing to the uh, customers will be on a musharaka basis. Mm -hmm. So instead of having credit officers. We will have one project manager that will take care maybe about 10 to 20 clients only. Mm -hmm. So he will have to go around and make sure you know, these funds are properly utilized. And unlike the banks, when they give a lot of finance to the customer, they disperse the finance to the customer. In this instance, the money will be kept by the bank and disbursed as and when required by the uh, customer. So we will be able to do a first line audit of the requirement before the money is being disbursed. So the mechanisms of running this model, Musharaka model, and the uh, model uh, of a lending model or financing model is very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I personally have done. Personally, I have financed three uh, three companies. Yeah, uh, we go on a 50-50 profit sharing. They needed some. They needed money. They couldn't get access to the banks, especially this COVID period. I do a joint venture with them. You know, I do a joint venture with them. Since it's Musharaka, I have to put one of my staff in their company. So as and when they need funds, eh, they, my staff will verify, you know, whether those requirements are correct and will disburse exactly as what is required. That's all. And sometimes we pay direct to them. Let's say, if, you know, if they take some supplies from somebody, we pay direct to them. You know, so the model between the banking model and this Musharaka model is two very different models. This is under Limra. Uh, this is we, we did under Limra as well as you know under my personal company. You have the third one. Uh, I mean the, the third one is uh, as I said, uh, this company was doing um, uh, 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 one one is they are supplying manpower to to uh, university hospital, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so that's the same thing. They needed about uh, you know five hundred thousand in terms of working capital because the principal uh, with whom they contract with pays after two months. Mm -hmm. So every month they require about two hundred thousand. So first month they don't get payment. Second month they don't get payment. Third month only they get payment. So whatever payments that they need, you know, uh, my staff will pay direct. You know, so in that sense we get involved in the operations of the company as well. So, as I said, model is very different. Can I, can I just query that? Sure. 
your 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 company giving that mudarabah musharakah um, uh, what do you call it transaction yeah, yeah. But you're still using the banks as intermediary right you you oh. are yeah. so in other words uh, when when we are talking about this idea of equity financing mm-hmm. yes, there may be companies like yours and others who are non banking uh, you know but they are still using the banking system to to make out the financing um and therefore that that is still the issue right because when when, when oma uh, oma chapra talks about an equity based system he is also referring to the banks themselves the banks themselves have to also be uh, you know undertaking this equity so so at the moment um, the banking system is not doing it but your your company and others like you are doing it so it's not really the idea of an equity system as envisaged by oma chapra lah because the banks are not doing it and yes. the main way we are channeling the funds is through the banking system yes okay that's why why we need to use the banks is because the payment system resides in the bank yeah. right. you know so we we do not use the bank's money yeah but we need to use the payment system which is why i alluded earlier to say that if there is another payment system like today there is paypal there is uh, we be there's other payment system as it develops in future we do not need to use the banking system anymore you know we can we can bypass as long as there is a payment system that when that we can write upon we can use that system okay okay uh, so i think we are already closing towards uh, zuhur already yeah so uh, i would like to uh, wrap up the session so before that uh, any any last words from dr gairu yeah no okay thank you very much uh, to dr abdul mana abdul waha and also dr gairu jasmi bagani for being our invited discussers for today uh, and i would like to thank as well uh, dr irwa uh, dr riasa dr mayudi professor aslam dr mustafa who is uh, currently joining from Turkey Dr. Mustafa oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's far but the voice is very very clear, uh, very clear. We, we feel very close to him <laughs> uh, so uh, I think uh, there are many uh, important things that we have uh, able to collect from this discussion inshallah these are all listed uh, and it will be very useful for us to look at propose uh, the proposal by Umar Chapra Uh, from the context of our our contemporary uh, times uh, particularly uh, benefiting from your experience uh, so, uh, thank you very much for that and also thank you uh, dr gairu for the insights on the monetary policy models uh, so uh, i would like to end our discussion today uh, with tasbih uh, ifara Thank you uh, very much, everyone who have uh, participated. Uh, hopefully, there's some benefit uh, for you joining the session. See you, inshallah, in future uh, sessions uh, uh, organized by the center. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Bye. 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 Bye.